Hey guys, welcome to the part of this class that everyone has been waiting for, the algebra part. This is my favorite part, part of the whole class. Can't wait to get started. So we're going to jump in. When we start talking about algebra, I know that sends some of you into a minor panic attack, but I'm hoping that we can make this a little less scary for you guys by taking it one step at a time. Variables and expressions are the most basic parts of algebra that you can talk about. Um, a variable is a letter. that takes the place of a number. And we use a variable in place of a number so that like the, almost the root word of variable, vary, that means to change, We use a letter for a variable so that we can put whatever number we want to in place of that variable. Its value can change. You guys have been using these for a very long time. These could be X and Y. Those are the most common ones. When you get a little farther into math, we start using variables like T if we want to represent time. We might use C to represent cost, um, maybe R for revenue, but you can use any variable you want to. An expression is a mathematical statement way cooler than a fashion statement. Um, it's a mathematical statement consisting of constants constants are just numbers variables And operations. And by operations, we don't mean somebody's going to come and take out your appendix. We're talking about add, subtract, multiply, and divide. So an example of an expression might be 3x plus Or you could have 4x minus 1 over 3. We could throw in some exponents. We could have x squared minus x plus 4. All of those are expressions. Sometimes... We want to use an expression to get a numerical value. And when we do that, we say we are evaluating the expression. Evaluate is a fancy way to say plug in the numbers. And do the math. <clears throat> Technically, we would like you to do it correctly. That is going to be the most productive use of your time, but your choice. An example might be you have the expression A plus 3B. 
And we say evaluate. For A equals 1 and B equals negative 2. Well, that means we are going to substitute the 1 for the A, the negative 2 for the B, and we're going to do the math. So let's go down here and see what that might look like. Before we start this, this would be an excellent time for you to pull up your Desmos Scientific Calculator. I have mine pulled up on the right side of my screen. Just a reminder, if you're working on the homework and the Desmos calculator is not embedded under the problem, you can always um, open a browser tab independently of Canvas and open up the Desmos scientific calculator off to the side, kind of like I have set here with my split screen. Number one says N squared minus M. Now, before we jump in and just start plugging in numbers willy-nilly, I want to caution you about these squares. If you do not use the right mathematical notation when you're plugging these numbers in, especially when it comes to exponents, life is not going to be good. Um, your Desmos calculator is only as smart as its user. So if you get the wrong answer and you say, but Ms. Graham, that's what the calculator told me. Well, we might need to go back and look at what you told the calculator because it can always, it will always, always, always give you the right answer to the problem you plug in. Whether or not you plugged in the right question or the right problem is an entirely different story. So one of the things I like to do when I'm setting up these evaluate problems is I like to use bajillions of parentheses. So what I want you to do starting out is to rewrite the expression, but leave a hole for the variables. Now I need negative two to fill in the n hole. So I'm gonna go to my n spot where I left my hole and I'm gonna fill it up with a negative two. Now this tells me that m is five. So I'm gonna put that five inside the parentheses where m used to be. From there, I'm going to flip myself over there to Desmos, and I am going to type in all of this delightful stuff exactly the way it's written, parentheses and all. Minus and yes, I am still putting the parentheses around the five. But Ms. Graham, it takes so long. So I'll get up, Buttercup. So n squared minus m, when n is negative 2 and m is 5, is equal to negative 1. This one is a little bit different, but I'm going to start it off exactly the same way. I am going to bring down the 8. I'm going to keep those parentheses that are already there. And I'm going to make a hole where the X used to be and a hole for the Y. And I'm going to close the parentheses at the end. Well, now I need an X value. I know X is supposed to be two. So I'm going to plug the X hole with a positive two. Y is negative three. So over by the Y hole, I'm going to put in a negative 3. Then I'm going to march over here to Desmos, and I'm going to type it in just like it looks. Yes, I know that there are double parentheses at the beginning. You are still going to type it in just like it looks. 
double check that you have plugged in what you want the answer to. And I get 40 when X is 2 and Y is negative 3. Here's another one with parentheses. I'm going to start by making the holes. I'm going to dig a hole for the M and a hole for the P. I leave everything else exactly as it is. My M is a positive 5, so I'm going to fill that, use that to fill in the M hole. P is 6. Then I'm going to go to Desmos. 15 minus 5, close the parentheses, plus 6. And I get 4 as the answer for that expression. Um, 4 is pretty straightforward. I want to take a look at 5 because of the division. Um, I'm going to start these off exactly like I did the others, even though it's a fraction. I know fractions make some of you twitchy. It's okay. I dig my holes for the x and the y. x is still 2. y is still negative 3. Please don't put this in your head. Be honest with yourselves. Your mental math is not that great. It is okay for your mental math to not be great. It is okay for you to go pull out a calculator because you acknowledge the fact that your mental math is not that great. However, it is not okay to think you are fabulous at mental math when you're not and get everything wrong because you refuse to put it in a calculator. Put it in a calculator. When I look at this last one, I need a hole for the N. This one um, I put on here specifically to show you what not to do. N is negative 2. Um, aside from not, not putting it in the calculator, you need to make sure that when you are plugging in with division or you're plugging in in a fraction, you're very aware of where it is you're typing things in. If I pause right here, I have my negative 2 divided by 6 in Desmos. If I don't pay attention and I keep going and I put in a plus 2, and I very quickly write down negative 0.25 and say that I'm done. You have the right answer to the wrong question. If you take a look in Desmos, I wasn't paying attention and I put the plus 2 on the bottom with the 6. That's not what my problem says. My problem says add 2 to the whole fraction. So I'm going to back up. And I'm going to make sure I add 2 to the whole fraction before I finalize my answer. Because I was paying attention and I double checked, I know that this expression evaluated at negative 2 is 5 thirds. Now to make this even more fun, we threw in some word problems because everybody loves word problems. Um, Ms. Graham is planting a garden that is three feet wide. She isn't sure how long to make it, but is considering 10 feet, 11 feet, or 12 feet for the length. She plans to enclose the garden and fencing to keep her dogs out. If L is the length of the garden, makes sense, she will need L plus L plus 3 plus 3, or 2L plus 6, feet of fencing. How much will she need for each possible garden length? Well, every time I do these, I like to draw a picture. Sometimes I use it, sometimes I don't, but life 
feels better because I have a picture. Now my rectangle is not that pretty, but that's okay. It is going to be three feet wide. That is set in stone. Um, I haven't decided yet how big I'm going to make it. But I know that if my length is the top and the bottom and my ends are three, this 2L plus 6 comes from adding everything up. That's something known as perimeter, and we will visit that when you're a little older. We want to know how much fence I need if I do 10 feet, 11 feet, or 12 feet for the length. So I'm going to do the 10 feet first. This is pretty easy math. I know 2 times 10 is 20 plus 6 is 26. So if I need, if I want um, 10 foot sides, then I need 26 feet of fencing. If I decide to make the sides of the fence um, one foot longer, Two times 11 is 22, plus 6 is 28 feet. If I go with 12 feet for the length, two times 12 is 24, plus 6 is 30 feet. So if I go with lengths of 10 feet, I need 26 total feet of fencing. If I want 11 feet for my lengths, then I need 28 feet of fencing. And if I want 12 foot long sides on my garden, then I need 30 feet of fencing. The second problem, it says the Math 0300 class is getting ready to begin a study of graphing. This is accurate. They want to create a table of values for the equation y equals negative 2x plus 1 if they use the numbers 0 through 5 for their x values. Find the y values that go with them. Y'all, this is a super sneaky way of saying evaluate y equals negative 2x plus 1. for x equals 0, x equals 1, x equals 2, x equals 3, x equals 4, and x equals 5. Well, here we go. I'm going to take my equation. I'm going to leave a hole for the x. And I'm going to fill my hole with that x value. So when x is 0, negative 2 times 0 is 0, plus 1. is 1. So when x is 0, y is 1. Now I want to fill it in with x equals 1. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, plus 1 is negative 1. Now I want to evaluate for x equals 2. If you want to go to Desmos, and that is totally acceptable, encouraged even, 
plug it in just like it looks, and you get a negative 3. I'm going to evaluate for x equals 3. I'm going to get a little lazy on you, and I'm going over here. All I'm going to do is delete the 2 from the last one and replace it with a 3. I get a negative 5 for my y value. I'm going to do the same thing for the 4 and the 5. I'm going to back out and take out the 3 and insert a 4. So I get the x is negative 7. Substitute 5, and I get a negative 9. The last one says a t-shirt company charges $32 to set up their equipment and $7.50 per shirt sold. The total cost for t-shirts is given by C equals 32 plus 7.5 T. What is the cost for ordering 30 shirts? So you know the cost is $32 plus 750 times the number of shirts. Well, they tell me how many shirts they want to order. It's 30 shirts. So I need to substitute the 30 for the T. So I'm going to set up my parentheses. I'm going to fill it up with the 30, and I'm going to go plug it in, just like we've done all the other ones. So that tells me the cost for printing 30 shirts is $257. That is the end of our quick glimpse into the world of variables and expressions. Stay tuned for 5.2, where we start setting up some equations. <laughs>